How do y'all? Recently, I was reading about the history of the tallest buildings in America. A pattern that I noticed is, from the earliest days of America, even before the American Revolution, through the end of the 19th century, the tallest structures in America were always churches or cathedrals. Which leads me to the topic of today's video, that is the handful of tallest buildings in America which existed in Chicago at the end of the 19th and beginning of the 20th century. From 1754 through 1810, the tallest building in America was Christ Church, pictured here in Philadelphia. This structure still stands today at 197 feet tall. Then, in 1810, this was surpassed by the Park Street Church, pictured here in Boston which also still stands today at a whopping 217 feet tall. After the Park Street Church in Boston, we have the Trinity Church in New York City, which then reigned on top of the list. Infamous for the many myths and legends tied to its construction, this beautiful structure still stands today at 279 feet tall and was the tallest building in America from 1846 through 1869. Then, in 1869, we have the founding of St. Michael's Church, pictured here in Chicago, also still standing today at 290 feet tall. Immense as these churches were, what followed through the next 30 years of Chicago history was the founding or creation of some of the most immense buildings and towers in the history of America. All of this building out of Chicago appears to be directly tied to the Great Fire in Chicago of 1871. During this Great Fire, we're told the last church that we looked at, St. Michael's, was severely damaged, although the foundation stood and quickly the church was rebuilt. However, most of the rest of Chicago was not so lucky. As we begin to dive into the history of these oldest buildings and the tallest buildings in America that were in Chicago, I'd like to pull the history back to before the Great Fire. We have the Chicago Board of Trade Building, which is where I'd like to begin this discussion, as the history of this building truly appears to be amalgamated with both Chicago's and America's history. The Chicago Board of Trade officially opened in 1848 situated in a room above a flower factory store. By 1856, however, 156 new members were added to the Board of Trade, and the board was relocated to a temporary building on South Water Street in 1860. Two weeks after the fire, the Board of Trade was temporarily moved to a building known as the Wigwam. The Wigwam was a temporary structure built of wood and stucco. However, this building was made permanent and we actually have photographs of the permanent building and they are exactly the same dimensions, the exact same structure as the temporary one said to be built in 1860. Interestingly, the masonry built structure that we have photographs of looks exactly the same as these artistic depictions of a quote, temporary wooden building. Either way, the structure of this wigwam then gave way as the Board of Trade constructed a new building from 1882 through 1885. The architect given credit for the new Board of Trade Tower and Building was said to be William W. Boyington, who became infamous in Chicago after his old world style Chicago Water Tower, which still stands today, 
survived the great fire of 1871. Again, you can see how everything ties back to this fire. It is said that all the other buildings directly surrounding the water tower and even the ground below the tower was scorched and completely destroyed. However, this water tower miraculously came out of the fire mostly unscathed. For this reason, we're told William Boyington was chosen to then design the new massive Board of Trade building. Upon completion, the Board of Trade Tower was not only the tallest building in Chicago, but it was the tallest building in all of America. Standing 320 feet tall, the tower of the Board of Trade building contained a massive clock and one of the largest bells in America at that time, weighing over 4,500 pounds. The tower was topped by a very detailed piece of what I like to call Antiquatech, said to be an 11 foot long over 9 foot tall weather vane in the shape of a sailing ship fabricated out of copper. While many photographs don't specifically seem to show this and many others appear to be framed as to not show the top of the building, I was able to find a few photographs from the late 1880s which appear to show the top of the Board of Trade Tower. Does this look like a ship to you? Besides the magnificent and breathtaking architecture, the Board of Trade building was also said to be fully electrified and illuminated, being the first building in Chicago to claim that honor. The light from the bell tower was said to be lit with the most powerful bulb in America, able to be seen from over 60 miles away. The building also contained four elevators. All of these items were powered by an on-site dynamo and generator located deep in the infrastructure of the Board of Trade building. The Great Hall of the Board of Trade building alone measured 152 feet by 161 feet by 80 feet, and the interior of the building was no less impressive than the exterior. The current narrative will tell us that the highest levels of this building were a viewing gallery, and this gallery was not opened until 1893 for the World's Fair in Chicago, where it became, as this narrative says, the highlight for many people's experience. It was written about in great detail. Interestingly, just two years after the World's Fair, two years after the tower was officially opened for public use, it was closed and dismantled. The tower was said to have a lean and be unsafe for public use, so the tower was then systematically removed just 10 years after being completed. Upon removal of the tower of the Board of Trade building, another structure became the tallest building in Chicago. Again, this structure is not a cathedral, but some may consider this to be a place of worship. We have the 1892 Masonic Temple of Chicago, owned and constructed 
by Lodge Number 33, who are said to still organize to this day. This absolutely immense building stood as the tallest building in Chicago at 302 feet, and in this narrative, it said that it held this title until the 1920s, due in part to an ordinance put in place that same year, in 1892, restricting the height of other buildings in Chicago. The top floors of the Masonic Temple contained the Masonic headquarters, as well as theaters, which were utilized by Chicago's elite. The rooftop was a massive garden, said to be one of the most secluded and swanky spots in Chicago at that time. By 1939, the Masons had moved out of the building, which then sat in disuse and disrepair. With the construction of the Chicago subway, which just so happened to need to go directly below the Masonic Temple, it was decided that this massive and most elaborate superstructure would be torn down completely. You'd imagine what replaced it was an immense subway station or an intricate building of similar stature. But in fact, the Masonic Temple of Chicago was replaced by what was at the time one of the first and largest Walgreens in America, a pharmacy which began in Chicago. However, this new Walgreens building left little to the imagination in the way of architecture and was very simple compared to the beautiful and massive Masonic Temple which it replaced. Which brings me to the last piece of this video. We also have another massive Antiquatech Tower in Chicago. However, this one is tucked away in many current narratives, often not mentioned at all amongst the tallest buildings of 19th century and early 20th century Chicago. Even though this building officially stood at one point over 390 feet tall, and when the pyramid of this building was removed, it still stood 300 feet tall, or roughly the same height as the Masonic Temple. We are going to discuss the Montgomery Ward Tower, part of which 
still stands in Chicago today. Montgomery Ward was one of the first mail order distributors in the entire world. Montgomery Ward and Company had no branch houses, no traveling men, and no agents in any territory. They sold goods direct to the consumer or user through the medium of catalogs, principally their general catalog or buyer's guide, which was a book weighing four pounds, had nearly 1,200 pages, contained over 17,000 pictures of goods that they sold, and quoted the prices of over 70,000 different things that you eat, use, and wear on a daily basis. The cost of publishing this book or catalog was said to be enormous, but it had been the custom of the house for years to send it to anyone who sent the company 15 cents to partially prepay the postage. Through this process, Montgomery Ward became the largest mail order company in America, according to multiple Chicago historic sites. When topped with the pyramid and weather vane statue, the Montgomery Ward Tower stood 394 feet tall, easily making it the tallest building in Chicago at that time and possibly the tallest building in America. Why I wanted to discuss this building, not only for the chance to show you the images and question the official history, which seems to indicate somehow the Masonic Temple was the tallest structure, what makes the Montgomery Ward Tower stand out is exactly the part of the tower that was supposedly removed, that is, the top pyramid and statue. Again, I'm reading through multiple different resources here. Some discuss the Montgomery Ward Tower in detail, while others don't mention it at all. However, the pyramid and the statue on top are what I want to focus on. Why is this statue important, and why does it look so familiar? To many of us who research the old world, it should. This is known as the Diana statue, one of three massive Diana statues said to be created in the late 19th century. The first was ordered by Stanford White, the eccentric architect of the Madison Square Garden, and was built by W.H. Mullins Manufacturing Company in Ohio. The original Diana was meant to be a weather vane which rotated. However, standing over 18 feet tall and weighing over 1,800 pounds, after installation, the statue remained relatively dormant, even in high winds. However, the installation did make Madison Square Garden the tallest building in New York when it was installed in 1891. Soon after installation, the Diana sculpture was heavily criticized both for not rotating and also for the nudity it depicted. Less than one year after installation, the massive piece of Antiquitech was removed and shipped to Chicago to be part of the 1893 World's Fair. The statue was shipped to Chicago to top the Woman's Temperance Union building. However, upon seeing the statue, the Union refused to accept it. It was then famously placed atop the agriculture building of the 1893 World's Fair, making that temporary structure one of the most memorable of all of the fair. By 1894, we're told almost all of the temporary structures of the fair still stood. At this time, a second major fire swept through Chicago, mainly inside the fairgrounds. According to the current narrative, the Diana statue, which stood atop the agriculture building for roughly eight months, was damaged severely. We're told the bottom half was burnt and unrecognizable, it was destroyed. However, the top half remained intact. Yet, in the same narrative, we're told no one knows what happened to the remains of the first Diana statue, and it was either lost or destroyed at this time. Then, the alleged creator of the first Diana rapidly produced a second to again top the Madison Square Garden. This Diana was significantly smaller at 14 and a half feet and weighed only 700 pounds. This made the sculpture able to rotate atop the garden as was originally intended with the first Diana. The second Diana statue was installed in 1893 and it was gilded. During daytime, it caught the sun and could be seen as far away as New Jersey, according to this narrative. At night, the Diana statue and the tower of Madison Square Garden were electrically illuminated, the first statue in history to claim this honor. By 1925, Madison Square Garden was demolished, although rebuilt in another location. 
The Diana statue did not fit the new design and was put into storage. It was said to have remained in storage until 1932 when it was then presented to the Philadelphia Museum of Art, where it remains to this day. Mentioned nowhere in this narrative or the current narrative of the Diana statues or the more mainstream history of the statue, we do not find any mention of the third Diana statue. And that's due in part to the mystery of the history. The third Diana statue was created to top the pyramid of the Montgomery Ward Tower in Chicago. This third statue was the largest Diana. And as you can see in the surviving images, also the most intricately built of the statues, being far more detailed in pose with the overall statue exceeding the previous ones in its grandeur. Credit today is usually given to John Massey Rind from Scotland. However, upon his passing in 1956, listed among his works, the Diana statue was never mentioned once. Some historians believe he did not construct the statue, but simply renovated it. The third Diana was also completely gilded, making it even more fascinating as this Diana is more complicated in design and larger. The third Diana was known more commonly as progress lighting the way for commerce, or simply progress. Now, here is where we get to a point in the history, the little Easter egg, the portion which makes us want to question everything. On the January 9th, 1894 edition of the Chicago Tribune, the day after the fire, which burned the World's Fair buildings and supposedly destroyed the original Diana statue or Diana one. We have an article published explicitly stating the Diana statue was not destroyed. How did it survive? According to the 1894 Chicago Tribune, the statue had been removed from the building just two weeks earlier because it was purchased. Who purchased the statue? None other than the Montgomery Ward Company. Again, this is not listed on the Wikipedia page of the statue or in any modern documents addressing the history of the Diana statues. Honestly, only defunct Chicago history websites and within the actual Chicago Tribune article do we find this evidence. It appears it has been scrubbed from everywhere else. So now we have an idea at least, we have an indication that the original most likely founded Old World statue of Diana which sat on top of Madison Square Garden, was then shipped to Chicago, topped the agriculture building of the World's Fair, and was then destroyed by fire, might not have actually been destroyed by fire at all. I don't know about you, but I feel like this is a huge piece of history, a critical detail, which needs to be addressed. We have almost physical evidence, we have documents, Chicago historical records, indicating Montgomery Ward purchased the original Diana from atop the agriculture building of the Chicago World's Fair, just days before the Great Fire that swept through the fairgrounds. Then, roughly five years later, we have progress lighting the way for commerce, or the alleged third Diana being installed atop the Montgomery Ward Tower. It appears the original Diana statue, or Diana Number 1, was slightly modified and then installed on the Montgomery Ward building and given a brand new history as a brand new statue, known as Progress, or simply Diana III. But why the sudden change and need for secrecy? Obviously, this is why the history of Diana III is so mysterious to me, because it appears to have been hidden. Diana III was installed in the year 1900, making the Montgomery Ward building the tallest in Chicago, with Diana reaching an apex over 394 feet in the air. Diana was also used as a beacon, not of hope, but as a beacon to the earliest planes flying through Chicago. The first airmail delivery occurred from New York to Chicago in 1918, with the lights of Diana and the Montgomery Ward Tower being a beacon leading the pilot to land in Grant Park after a flight of over nine hours. The Diana statue actually was surrounded by four electric beacons, written in 1900 to each be the equivalent to 1,000 candlelights, making the Montgomery Ward Tower visible everywhere in Chicago and visible along most parts of Lake Michigan. However, 
By the year 1947, we're told the Montgomery Ward Tower was deemed unsafe and the entire pyramid and Diana statue were removed, reducing the height of the building to less than 300 feet. The Diana statue was removed and then cut into pieces, of which their destiny is almost entirely unknown. Large pieces remained within the Montgomery Ward building or were distributed amongst the company, while smaller portions were auctioned off and purchased by people around the Chicago community. Again, mind you, with what we read about what we discovered earlier, this Montgomery Ward Tower Diana could have been the first Diana, renovated and added onto and given a new history as the third Diana or progress. Either way, this statue was immense. It was beautiful antiquitech, but do you think the people who purchased the pieces of this statue had any idea of what they were receiving? Most recently, we're told the original head of the Montgomery Ward Diana was auctioned off in the year 2014. The Diana statue became a symbol of Montgomery Ward and its company almost as soon as it was installed in the year 1900, which led Montgomery Ward to order numerous dozens of more Diana replicas to be created, including the most famous and still standing Spirit of Progress, completed in 1929, which became the official company mascot. This Diana is a slightly less complicated posed one than Diana 3, but the Spirit of Progress of Diana 4 still stands today, and after completion, it was mass-produced, so every Montgomery Ward building would be topped with one. This coincided with the opening of the new Montgomery Ward Administrative Building, which was topped by Diana 4. Fascinatingly, we also don't know who constructed the original Diana 4 either. In 1979, a woman referred to as Mrs. Anderson came forward claiming her grandfather, one Conradi Anderson, had built the Diana 4, which became the symbol for Montgomery Ward. These claims were never verified, and to this day, we still do not know the true origin of Diana Statue No. 4, which is somewhat miraculous given the history of the Montgomery Ward Company is directly related to this statue. The Spirit of Progress, or Diana 4, and most of her copies from the other Montgomery Ward buildings are still surviving today.